Uh, thank you, Jao, and uh, good morning, all of you. Good afternoon and uh, good evening, all of you. Yeah, today I would like to uh, show some of our work um, on uh, geospatial activities. Yeah, this is the here is the title: the monitoring crop plants using remote sensing data, ground data, and machine learning algorithms. And first of all, I will give a little bit of brief about uh, uh, what we are doing and what are the major products we are generating. And after that, I'll I'll show some of the uh, you know traditional methods and uh, machine learning algorithms and some of outputs I will show you. And finally, I will show the some of uh, you know uh, products uh, how these base products how it will be useful for uh, agriculture development and uh, uh, and the important input for. Uh, crop modeling and uh, other spatial analysis results and this is, here is the major products what we are working on mainly uh, major crop type mapping is the primary task which will be useful uh, in acreage estimation under various crops uh, in of course com uh, command area in ag all agriculture dry land areas as well and second product is uh, uh, land use land cover changes including major crop types uh, over the period, uh, the, the crop, uh, you know, dryland areas in the very vulnerable areas, those areas it is, uh, you know, changing over the years. So this is very important uh, to monitor how much area it is expanding, how much area is reduction. This is all we can see through land use, land uh, spatial temporal changes. And third one is length of growing periods, which is very important for modeling purposes and uh, uh, especially agronomists and breeders, where they can grow their uh, varieties. And this is very important product. And cropping intensities, especially Asia, yeah, this is a very important product and uh, monitor continuously. Because, uh, we, uh, you know, for example, India and South Asia, there is no further expansion of cropland. Only possibility uh, we can intensify uh, cropping pattern like uh, double crop to sing, uh, triple crop and single crop to double crop like that. And that is also one of the important product uh, we are working. And, and finally, abiotic stresses like drought and submergence. Uh, and we are doing uh, over the period, over the year, years and identifying some of the areas where periodic drought and uh, submergence is occurring but disseminating some stress tolerant varieties. These are the six products we are continuously working on. Apart from this, uh, uh, mainly uh, rice fallow is also one of the important thing we are working. Uh, that will also, I will show you some of our work. Uh, and these are the major products. And we are integrating uh, for water productivity assessment, uh, spatial analysis for prioritization, impact assessment studies, and uh, crop extent maps uh, will be used in uh, uh, you know, crop simulation models as an important input to assess yield predictions and yield estimations in, um, in larger geographies. And another important thing is tracking of NRM technologies, which is uh, uh, one of the important tasks in here, in here in CRISAT. Mainly we have, uh, we have started many interventions at watershed level and how it is in terms of expansion of cropland um, and natural resource management. We are assessing through satellite imagery along with the ground information. And these are here is the end users, uh, mainly you know um, uh, social scientists and crop modelers, agronomists, breeders, and planning departments uh, mainly use these data sets. Okay, this is the background. Given this background, uh, first of all, uh, this is the overview of my presentation. First of all, uh, ground data. Uh, we are uh, uh, you know we are continuously we are conducting lot of ground uh, ground data for various countries. And we are organizing appropriately uh, for, uh, um, uh, for monitoring croplands. And once we get the ground data, we are using traditional methods and uh, uh, by using machine learning algorithms also. And traditional methods, which is the longer process and downloading and pre-processing all images uh, and uh, uh, by using different kinds of supervised and unsupervised classifications uh, uh, for mapping croplands and land use land cover areas. And now we are, we have last five years, we have adopted widely uh, Google Earth Engine. And uh, by using Google Earth Engine, uh, we have produced various uh, kinds of products. Of course, uh, even abiotic stresses also we are uh, uh, monitoring through machine learning algorithms. And uh, we are integrated, but uh, we achieved, of course, we have achieved only few, uh, few of uh, 
products like uh, crop extent irrigated versus rain fed and uh, um, cropping intensities we extracted from machine learning algorithms but uh, still uh, crop extent and the specific crop types which is very difficult with machine learning that's the reason we are using semi automated technique and uh, the most of the process done in google earth engine machine learning algorithms and uh, uh, final output we are integrating with the ground information that is uh, semi automated technique by using eridas and traditional softwares and final uh, finally uh, geospatial products for decision making uh, we are integrating what i mentioned the geo, uh, these products uh, we are integrating with uh, some other analysis and finally we will make it a uh, some kind of useful product uh, uh, for decision making okay and first of all ground data actually we have um, we have developed a mobile application uh, icrops this is android based application we captured uh, geo tagged photographs uh, geo uh, geo tagged photographs with with, with uh, uh, important information which is uh, major crop type irrigation source uh, and other parameters uh, you know length of growing periods also we are capturing from here and the first uh, primary crop and secondary crop two crops uh, uh, we are gathering from this specific location wise and finally we captured photograph along with geo tagged photo uh, yeah, here you can see Uh, that along with all that information and we are capturing two to three photographs at each location uh, which is geo tagged uh, here you can see the clear information and this all data will sync into the our server and uh, anybody can um, yeah we can share all this data up to date and it which will give um, along with the time and space also it will give and so far we have collected we have conducted uh, ground data in various countries in uh, south asia and uh, africa of course southeast asia also we uh, collected and uh, uh, more than 15 countries uh, we uh, our team was traveled and we captured lot of information um, from 2010 to till date we captured these countries mainly and here for example specifically for south asia uh, you can see here uh, the uh, the spatial distribution of ground data where we have visited and collected a lot of ground data uh, uh, this is here i mentioned irrigated source wise and rain fed cropland area and other land use land cover which we are not able to visit those sites but we captured from high resolution uh, satellite images through uh, google earth data we captured that data we used for our analysis and here you can see the many points we captured from high resolution satellite imagery we are zoom in on in, uh, interior areas also we captured uh, good sets of ground data this data we feed into the machine learning algorithms here uh, yeah this is the first of all uh, traditional methods how we are doing uh, you know we are downloading time series uh, 16 days uh, time series data in similar way uh, high resolution every 6 days Uh, 12 days data we are downloading uh, we are making uh, stacks of uh, uh, yearly uh, crop years crop year different crop years with the season wise monsoon winter and summer seasons and uh, um, that data set we run we are running unsupervised classification by using various tools decision tree algorithms uh, and also uh, spectral matching technique and field data uh, we are classifying uh, we are grouping into the classes first of all initially we are taking 150 to 200 classes and uh, making major groups based on decision rules uh, that is decision rule is based on temporal profile so we are combining uh, few groups that each group we are matching with ideal spectral signatures and finally we are uh, classifying um, the classes if you see here the ground data ideal spectral generation for each crop wise this is for kharif season here you can see um training data and validation data of course some you know training data means uh, we are capturing detailed information particular location which has uh, all irrigation source and also most of the times we are interviewing farmers and sometimes we are uh, interacting with extension officers and we are getting lot of information uh, for training data and validation data just uh, uh, while going on the road we are capturing from the uh, Compute um, few locations that we used for validation purpose. So where we got a precise location and training data by using that data, we are extracting ideal spectral signature. If you see in the right side, 
uh, irrigated double crop rice wheat system, irrigated double crop rice rice. Like, like that way, the all major crops in uh, South Asia, we capture like this. And similar way, uh, we did for our Rabi season and summer season as well. Yeah, based on above methodology and the ideal spectra signatures, uh, uh, you can see here we extracted uh, uh, all major crop types, including irrigation, double irrigated double crop, rice wheat system, rice rice system, rice pulses. Here you can see all the classes. All most of the uh, nearly we captured uh, 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 more than ten crops we captured, but here I'm showing only eleven crops, the major crops: rice, soybean, maize, groundnut. Here you can see the spatial distribution. Of course, these maps uh, uh, and uh, for district level, we have compared with the national statistics as well. But uh, sometimes it is uh, yeah, nearly uh, plus or minus 40% areas it is varying. But uh, this classification, this classified spatial extent, it is mainly uh, based on uh, you know, spectral profile. Of course, so you can see some of the areas, some of the crops, so for example, sugarcane and potato, we have very limited ground data. If you see in the previous maps, a uh, previous uh, uh, figure, you, here you can see the sugarcane. It is only available in Maharashtra and Karnataka states. But uh, there is some area you can see in uh, even uh, Punjab and uh, Haryana uh, in northern part as well. But uh, we don't have this data. But based on these signatures, we captured these regions as well. And similar way, potato also, we have limited ground data. But uh, the similar signature we captured at the same time, we used some ancillary data, some secondary data. And of course, sometimes we are using uh, uh, national statistics as well. With that information, uh, we, um, we have done for 2014 and 15, we mapped out. And similar way, uh, we are doing for continuous time series as well. Yeah, this is all, uh, this is for uh, uh, winter and summer, uh, summer seasons on rice, wheat, Maize, all major six crops, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, chickpea is a rabi, rabi crop mainly. But uh, this rice and other crops are it is uh, the window is varying from winter to summer. And uh, the state wise, if you see here, the state wise uh, crop land distribution, and also we compared with the national statistics, uh, there is you know, there are outliers, but uh, you know, R square is uh, of course, this is uh, less, but uh, there are so many plus or minus it is 40% of areas it is varying uh, across the geographies. And similar way, we have done some of the few of the countries in Africa as well. For example, Ethiopia, we have done specific crop wise. Uh, uh, here you can see the major crops, so teff and wheat, these are all uh, distribution, crop uh, distribution you can see in the entire uh, Ethiopia. And similar way, South, Southeast Asia also we have done uh, for uh, uh, from 2011, 12 to till date we have done. But here I'm showing 2017 and uh, 2012 and 13 uh, because we have validated only for these two years only. And uh, here you can see this is mainly uh, you know we have uh, we want to identify fallow areas in uh, uh, Myanmar and uh, where we can disseminate short duration legume crops. And now what, uh, what I explained to you that is for uh, um, traditional methods, uh, but uh, here it is, uh, there are several problems are there, which will take a very long time and also a lot of ground information, ideal spectra also it is, uh, um, uh, there is a big process, but now we, we, we adopted a Google Earth engine uh, by using Google Earth engine so far we have prepared a, a few of the data set. But you know, previous maps, uh, you know, previous what I showed in traditional methods, we are using only uh, two data sets. One is NDVI and LSWI. But here we are using uh, all bands. Uh, you can see here for season one, independent season wise, we have prepared all 10 bands we have prepared along with uh, uh, EVI, NDVI, NDWI, and slope. Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, uh, you know, we are stacking all together and uh, by using some segmentations also we have done uh, based on agroecological zones. And finally, we are running random forest classifier based on uh, using the training data, what I showed in the previously. And uh, to, uh, actually this is done for uh, 2013 to mean of uh, 2013 to 2015 mean data we have taken uh, for, uh, for crop extent maps. Here you can see create of, uh, creating Image composites, 
selection of training samples, uh, and this is the implementation of the random forest classifier. First of all, yeah, we have stacked all these bands into the single composite. It is the total 31 band at 30 meter spatial resolution. Uh, we use Landsat imagery. And based on random forest classifier, here is the output, what we extracted from uh, irrigated versus rain-fed cropland. Yeah, the overall sample size is uh, 2,634 samples we uh, used for uh, this classification and rain-fed irrigated, you can see here. And this is course also we shared in LPDAC. And uh, ground data also is available in LPDAC. You can, uh, if anybody interested, you can access this information from LPDAC. And now, uh, actually, we are uh, we have some uh, few issues in uh, optical data, but now we are integrating with uh, uh, you know Sentinel one and Sentinel two, and uh, another method is the pure Sentinel one, and another one is Sentinel two. It's the combination of both, um, and we have prepared uh, for smaller regions. We are testing now for specific crop type mapping. This is uh, purely Sentinel one based uh, uh, classification. And this will be the Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2, both integrating together. And there are, you know, there are area-wise, uh, uh, a lot of area it is changing, especially for few uh, few crops like rice and uh, uh, only rice it is exactly picked out, but other crops it is, there is a huge difference between Sentinel-1 analysis and Sentinel-1 and 2 combination of analysis. And this is for Karif season and we used uh, um, uh, Sentinel one data, and if you see here, the overall accuracy is 85. This is for uh, last season, this is for current season, uh, 2020 Karif season. Here, the overall accuracy is 85.54, and Kappa quotient also 0 0.81. Here, if you see here, especially in most of the areas, you know, uh, crop is very clearly, it is picked out. Uh, rice crop and uh, bottom, you can see, some crop. Even field boundaries also uh, clearly it is extracted from uh, by using you know, this is completely in machine learning algorithms. But uh, here you can see the crowd of uh, ground information. We captured a uh, lot of ground information uh, and a uh, very precise way. Because this is for district, it is possible, but the larger areas, uh, it is, yeah, uh, it is, a, yeah, there are a yeah, big problem to capture larger areas. But now we are, uh, we are implementing for larger uh, entire India level and based on, uh, uh, three years ground data from 2013 to 2015, uh, 2013 to 2016. Three years we have collected a, a lot of ground data in India. With that data, we are implementing on uh, Landsat 30 meters resolution. In similar way, uh, this is for another district and uh, here we have limited ground data, but limited ground data also we have achieved, uh, you know, a very high accuracy, 87.5 point accuracy. 87.5% uh, uh, accuracy. And here you can see cropland distribution across uh, Chitrakot district. And now we are integrating, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, different uh, uh, methods, spectral ma traditional method and uh, uh, different machine learning algorithms. And we come, we are comparing the results. And there are, a, a, there is a, you know, um, but compared to machine learning algorithms, spectral matching technique is a more appropriate and more accurate compared to other methods. Maybe uh, we have limited ground data. Maybe we have to increase, uh, uh, you know, our ground data as well. Uh, and also, for for example, some of the crops we have uh, limited area, and uh, those areas it is mixing with other land use land cover, especially other crops, which we are uh, we have to uh, rectify in further. Uh, and also, we have compared with the uh, 30 meters cropland. This is cropland extent. Uh, here, even 30 meters, we are not able to differentiate, but uh, if you see in uh, spectral matching technique uh, by using 10 meters spatial resolution, clearly you can see here farm boundaries and a clear uh, cropping pattern, even side by side areas also, uh, there is different cropping patterns you can see clearly. And another product uh, which we have generated, this is cropping intensities. Uh, we have, uh, this is also testing stage, but uh, uh, we have implemented for a larger uh, Krishna Basin level, but it is, uh, yeah, very good correlation with the uh, traditional methods as well. And um, another one, another product so we are generating, which is a, a crop stress uh, like uh, submergence and, uh, you know, flooded areas and uh, drought prone areas. 
here uh, this is the overall our methodology we are using dem uh, modis data and sentinel 1 and 2 and i'm not going through all this uh, methodology but uh, i will show that quickly uh, some of the results uh, yeah here you can see this is from this is implemented in afar region in ethiopia uh, here actually we want to promote uh, flood based farming systems and uh, we have to promote uh, uh, grass in some of the flooded areas uh, to avoid uh, soil erosion and uh, uh, utilization of for fodder feed and here we have uh, integrated you know monthly uh, flood prone areas we mapped out over the period from 2016 to uh, 2019 and based on historical data, based on uh, four years information, we have identified flood-based farming systems. Here you can see the flood less than 2% slope and uh, flood 2 to 3% slope, like different uh, slope systems and how much area it is available and where we can uh, you know, promote uh, paragraphs and uh, fodder mainly. And uh, here we have validated with the ground information as well. Here it, you can see here, uh, exact flooded time we visited some of the areas and um, our accuracy also it is uh, very accurately we picked out all flooded areas here you can see the photographs also clear where flood was happened and semi automatic actually what i presented that is all uh, you know um, this is machine learning algorithms there are some limitations uh, uh, especially uh, crop extent mapping uh, that is the reason we use uh, we are uh, we are still using semi automated technique and uh, here in most of the process is done in machine learning algorithms and finally once we get the classified uh, unsupervised classification from the uh, google earth engine after that we are implementing our spectral matching technique in this way the both uh, machine learning and traditional methods uh, uh, you know uh, we are getting very good uh, accurate results uh, for the larger regions as well. If you see here, uh, we have done for uh, three uh, three districts, Jansi, Chitrakot and Panna. Uh, this is for the Rabi season and similar way we are doing for Karif season as well by using Sentinel-1 data, what I showed previously. And uh, here you can see in, this is the traditional method and semi-automated technique. Here very accurately, you know, more than 90% uh, uh, accurately, we picked all major crops, at least, you know, some few crops, very less accuracy where there is a fragment, very fragmented, very small area where we don't have good ground data. Those areas we are missing, but a majority 95% of area, it is uh, uh, very accurately picked by using semi-automated technique, uh, using machine learning and uh, uh, spectral matching techniques. And also these maps mainly used for uh, at a field level also. And uh, uh, here you can see we overlaid field boundaries and which field is affected uh, really. And uh, uh, this is also uh, one of the important input for uh, yield assessment studies as well. Here, this is a left side, it is classified map and right side, it is a satellite imagery, Sentinel-2 imagery, false color composite. And the plot boundaries also uh, we can extract from uh, Sentinel uh, high resolution images. And now, um, yeah, we uh, what I have presented that is uh, the major products what we are extracting from satellite imagery. Now, the uh, the outputs how it will be useful for uh, uh, decision making. Uh, here, I will mainly I will show uh, assessing potential areas for short duration legumes. So we are analyzing um, uh, uh, you know temporal rice fallow areas from 2000 to till date. Uh, that I will show how we are integrating with uh, some uh, other climate data uh, to identify exact areas where we can disseminate uh, uh, different crops like, uh, you know, uh, chickpea, groundnut and uh, other pulses. And second one is assessing watershed, uh, watershed impacts. Uh, uh, that is also we are integrating with secondary information. And finally, I will show the uh, watershed prioritization. Oh. And here you can see uh, the main methodology uh, here we uh, used spectral matching technique. From 2000 to till date, uh, uh, we extracted rice fallow areas for entire uh, South Asia. Uh, yeah, this is rice, uh, rain fed rice fallow, in irrigated rice fallow. And uh, we found that, uh, you know, earlier up to 2010, there was a only um, rain fed rice fallows was there, but uh, 
recently after 2010 onwards uh, in, in some of the areas especially karnataka andhra pradesh telangana in some of the states in uh, southern part of india there is a lot of area actually earlier it was irrigated double crop now it is switched to irrigated single crop rice especially this is all we monitored uh, uh, through uh, temporally and uh, here you can see the detailed information this is the latest uh, 2019 to 20 here is the rice fallow area especially in eastern part and some parts of you know even nagarjuna sagar command area also uh, most of the area it is switched to double crop to single crop here you can see clearly now uh, we are using some climate data um, and some uh, you know um, at uh, some secondary information we are uh, mainly we are using chips data for uh, from uh, for the one year of course we are doing for uh, historically as well and uh, we are assessing potential areas at particular location wise and uh, uh, for uh, for example uh, tahsil and uh, sub district wise and we are we are giving figures area figures how much area we can disseminate uh, uh, different crop wise uh, chickpea groundnut and other pulses we are integrating three crops in uh, where we can disseminate we are mapping out by using this approach and at the same time uh, we are also implementing for entire uh, asia uh, rice fallows uh, 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 by using machine learning algorithms uh, but we here we have used only for 2019 and 20, uh, 19 and 20 uh, with some limited ground information we used here but uh, most of the data we are extracting from 2010 and 11 uh, where we have a lot of ground data from that maps uh, that year we have done one year we have done rice fallows uh with that information we are extracting other regions as well southeast asia mainly where we don't have much ground information with using that data we are mapping out rice fallows and watershed uh, interventions and uh, further uh, important thing impact assess uh, assessing impacts of uh, watershed interventions and similar way some other impact assessment also we are doing in crop wise um, uh, here i am showing uh, here i am presenting impacts of watershed interventions here integrate uh, integration of uh, you know in ecrisat uh, especially in um, various parts of uh, africa and uh, india we are disseminating different uh, uh, technologies at uh, watershed level and uh, also at the same time we are we have lot of ground information and secondary information from the watersheds and we are now we are integrating with the remote sensing data and we are assessing how how much impact was happened and uh, uh, which area and what are the areas uh, is uh, really uh, expanding agriculture and of, co of course of uh, even um, natural resource management this is for aba garima one of the uh, study watershed in ethiopia uh, this is a central watershed actually we are uh, we have implemented a lot of interventions in central watershed but uh, we are comparing with the neighboring watershed actually this interventions is spill over to neighboring watersheds as well and this is all we assessed from 2002 to 2019 here you can see there was a, a clear impact uh, we can see from 2002 to 2019 and lot of area cropland area is increased at the same time uh, other land use land cover is decreased especially in uh, trees plantations this area is drastically decreased and previous map you may not see much detail you know where the changes were occurred here it is uh, changes from 2002 to 2013 and 2013 to 2019 if you see from 2002 to to 2019 there was a lot of change was happened and range lands to crop land and shrub lands to crop land here you can see the uh, crop categories and prioritization of watersheds uh, uh, at the same time you know we are integrating um, uh, socio economic parameters biophysical parameters integrating together and simple um, algorithms we are running and we are prioritizing the regions where we can uh, start the watershed prioritization uh, low priority medium priority and high priority we have categorized into three uh, priorities across uh, nigeria here you can see the clearly maps right side it is the uh, Where, uh, where it is clearly uh, it is clear impact uh, not I'm sorry impact it is clear where we can disseminate watershed inter where we can, we can implement the watershed interventions for agriculture development and at the same time natural resource management
and finally uh, you know we are the some of the special products actually we are using for insurance products uh, here uh, you know a lot of ground information here this is the overall uh, uh, flow diagram and we are using satellite imagery and some of our ground information where we captured from our mobile applications and some of weather parameters we all integrating together and producing some of the special products uh, mainly cropping pattern length of growing period and crop stress maps and soil properties we are extracting from some secondary you know nbss land use land uh, lup team we all integrating together and doing yield predictions and climate analysis and crop based advisory this all information we are feeding to the uh, um, capacitating farmer collectives for the risk mitigation and resilience communities and uh, of course uh, of course developing miso level insurance products as well with this information and finally it will be feeding into the uh, policy advocacy also uh, it is it will be very useful for policy makers as well uh, and uh, decision making and reinsurance and insurance companies also using this information timely information and finally and uh, uh, you know we are uh, we are uh, producing whatever we are producing from the remote sensing that is uh, one of the important input for crop modeling purposes as well here you can see the climate data soil data and management practices this is all information we collected from secondary information and some uh, state departments and management practices we are extracting from our uh, mobile applications this is all we are feeding into the crop models mainly uh, we are using apsim model uh, and finally we are uh, we are producing various products like uh, uh, soil moisture leaf area index and uh, uh, yield yield predictions through crop models and from remote sensing we are extracting actually we are getting leaf area index uh, uh, using uh, savi equation and that one and this one we are comparing together and uh, we are uh, standardizing our crop model and finally we are producing yield predictions as well at a uh, lowest administrative boundary level actually currently uh, we are implementing last two seasons uh, 2019 and 20 and uh, 20 and 21 uh closely working with the uh, national system and uh, with the support of uh, ministry of agriculture the mncfc and we are uh, yield prediction was done in at uh, lowest administrative boundary level at gp level gram panchayat level and here leaf area index from remote sensing data and uh, our modeled output and uh, yeah we have yeah we are running so many simulations and uh, wherever we have got uh, appropriately we are uh, we are adapting that one and also we are comparing with uh, uh, from our um, observed data and uh, predicted yields and there was a pretty good correlation for uh, rice and in similar way we have done for other crops as well maize groundnut and uh, chickpea uh, and uh, rice it is uh, more uh, you know more uh, you know more accurate because our sample size and model size uh, our model also it is coming real uh, model results are very uh, coming very good and for other crops still we are improving our approach uh, our methods and approaches and you can see uh, of course our space uh, our um, crop extent maps will be used in uh, important input for crop modeling as well here if you see here groundnut uh, the yield variability from less than 500 uh, kg per hectare to more than 2000 hectare and the spatial distribution here you can see and especially where uh, you know especially in anantapur uh, that is the one of the uh, lowest uh, yield we are getting because all rain fed system and also very uh, vulnerable, vulnerable climate in that region uh, where there is a less yield was noted actually this is we have implemented for groundnut but now we are trying for uh, other major crops as well other, our main red crops in entire india and some of the products actually the special products uh, we are also using for uh, measuring performance measure and improving productivity studies as well here uh, actually historical um, land use land cover um, our uh, crop extent maps uh, using for uh, uh, historical analysis we are identifying some areas where there is a vulnerable areas those areas we are recommending new cropping pattern if uh, for example this is the one of the kadam region Uh, in telangana one of the command area where there is a, a periodically they are getting uh, some crop stress uh, due to the crop stress uh, uh, you know they are losing 
some yield at uh, tail enders. That's the reason we are recommending different cropping pattern. If we adopt, if they adopt that cropping pattern and uh, more or less nearly 40 to 50 percent, uh, uh, they can uh, yield get uh, uh, they get more more benefit. At the same time, uh, 20 to uh, 30 percent of water utilization will be reduced. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is here also we are using lot of uh, you know uh, the spatial maps and uh, uh, our uh, time series analysis we have done and finally i will give a uh, you know uh, we have traditional methods and we have uh, machine learning algorithms it's available but, but there are lot of gaps and limitations are there especially in optical data uh, you all know mainly uh, you know optical data there is a uh, severe cloud problem during the monsoon season that's the reason we are running now. We are using Sentinel-1, uh, but we have uh, some limitations with the Sentinel-1 data as well. But still we are improving with the machine learning algorithms. We are improving our algorithms uh, to uh, map accurate classification. And also there are some other uh, Google Earth engine, you can see not able to standardize our algorithms, especially for crop classification. Uh, still uh, we are improving that. We are taking support from uh, different people uh, like uh, you know USGS and uh, uh, some of the NASA people and uh, uh, Google people also supporting us to improve our uh, algorithms for crop classification. And classification actually so far um, uh, we uh, but we have limited for uh, specific regions as well. For, for example, district and uh, small regions, uh, small uh, you know district and state wise only. But uh, we would like to implement for the larger region. Uh, this is the reason we are we have developed mobile applications and we are closely working with uh, uh, NAS, NAS partners. And uh, uh, we, uh, if we, yeah, for, to get the more more and more information from the NAS partners as well uh, for large scale crop extent mapping. And way forward now, uh, yeah, yeah, for especially you know. Suitable rice fallows for intensification legume crops. Now uh, we are implementing in Google Earth Engine uh, for entire Asia and uh, uh, for entire Asia, especially for India. Uh, we are using some other parameters and we are identifying some of the key spots of uh, uh, where we can disseminate different legume crops and uh, other crops. And improving crop water productivity. This is, uh, actually we are implementing for uh, uh, Nigeria, this one. Uh, one of the major, uh, one of the command area, one of the major command area, uh, and uh, this is all process. The most of the, you know, um, most of the products we are generating by using Google Earth Engine only, and crop stress monitoring. Right now, uh, actually, we are, we are developing crop stress maps for every 15 days for entire India uh, by using uh, modest, uh, uh, modest time series data. But now uh, we are implementing. Uh, Sentinel-1 for entire, uh, you know, few of the states we have started in this year, uh, but uh, there are some issues with the methodology, still uh, we are improving that one. Uh, and also what we generated by using MODIS data and we are, uh, uh, we are sharing to the insurance and reinsurance companies. Our data was used by more than 50 uh, reinsurance companies, our data. And another one is important one where we are closely working with the MNCFC. Uh, Ministry of Agriculture, GP level yield assessment using technology. And uh, last year, 2019 and 20, we have implemented, uh, um, of course, there are some limit, uh, we have, we are not achieving uh, high accuracy, but we are now, we are improving our methodologies as well. And we have contributed, uh, uh, yeah, based on above uh, slides, actually more information you can extract from these publications. And we have contributed several publications and Codes and uh, data sets also available in uh, LPDAC and our uh, ECRISAT web portal. Uh, and here appropriate links also, it is available here. And here is our research team mainly. Um, I would like to uh, uh, thank to all our team members and uh, USGS, especially Dr. Anthony Whitebread and uh, Dr. Tankabel Prasad, who are supporting and uh, uh, encouraging our group. Yeah, thank you all. 
Okay, yeah, thank you very much for, again, a very rich presentation. Uh, yeah, we went through a lot of slides and lots of very rich information and graphics. And yeah, I think we everyone really want to be able to catch up with uh, video recording and slide after the webinar. So uh, yeah, we will make sure those are available uh, after the webinar is finish it uh, through the Big Data Platform website later. So um, yeah, so Murali, while you are giving presentation, we got uh, lots of good questions in Q&A box. Uh, so if you can open the Q&A box uh, at the bottom of the screen, um, so I think you can also see some of the slides and some of the questions already uh, entered. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, the slide will be available from uh, together with YouTube video after the webinar. Uh, we will send uh, the link after uh, everything is processed and packaged. Uh, so I think you should be able to uh, check back on the Big Data website, Big Data Platform website, uh, say early next week uh, to uh, yeah, to rewatch the video recordings and uh, download the video, uh, the, download the slide. Okay, uh, so Murali, th there are questions. Uh, I think as soon as you uh, started showing iCrop app um, and I saw a couple of questions came up. Oh yeah, where, where we can download the data, where we can use the iCrop app, etc. So can you give us a little bit more information about the iCrop app and yeah, where people might be able to download the data for their own application? Uh, actually, this is uh, uh, this application and server managed by uh, our colleague Ismail. And uh, if anybody can access this iCrops from uh, uh, this is Android based application. And this is all information. It will actually, it will save in uh, your personal mobile. At the same time, it will sync to our server as well. And uh, who, who wants this data, please uh, send a mail to our group on uh, any, uh, either Smile or me. We are happy to share this uh, data sets. Actually, okay, previously, this is, uh, we are using, um, uh, we standardized uh, this mobile application uh, last year only. Last two years, uh, we have collected a lot of information, but uh, previously, we used by um, uh, all information by manually only. Of course, that data also, it is available in LPDAC, most of the data, and some data we, we are happy to share. Okay, great. Uh, and yeah, just for everyone to know, uh, Murali has been also quite openly sharing data uh, used in published articles. So yeah, if you go through uh, his publication record, again, a lot, I mean, Murali has been really productive uh, for the last several years. Uh, I think he will be happy to share with you more detail, uh, even data, uh, if you want to know more about uh, the, the studies. Um, and, and Murali also, uh, because you showed a lot of different studies, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly how, uh, which one this applies to, but there are some questions. If people want to do something similar in different countries, uh, what would they take? Uh, what would that take? Uh, so yeah, you, saw, you showed a lot of data collection effort um, and very carefully planning when and where to visit uh, to collect those uh, yeah, the, the uh, ground reference data. Um, and uh, can you give us a little bit more description on how, how you do that? Uh, so how long it takes maybe and how many people you travel together with, or uh, maybe even right now, I, I know you are in the middle of the, some crop cut experiment uh, data collection. And can you give us some ideas on how intensive and how yeah, challenging that, it, uh, that data collection effort might be? Yeah. Thanks, Jao, for your uh, kind words, and uh, you know I will share some of uh, our views and uh, how we are doing. I will explain you. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know uh, before start ground data, we do crop classification, preliminary crop classification, based on uh, you know uh, expert knowledge. You know some information, uh, particularly for that particular region, we are looking at uh, national statistics or some information from uh, our colleagues. We are getting some information. And based on that, we are preparing preliminary map. And by using that one, we are preparing route also. At the same time, not only that particular crop, crop growing areas, but other areas also we will cover one or two sites. That is one product. And another one is uh, we are simply running unsupervised classification 
uh, uh, around 30 to 40 classes but these 30 to 40 classes each of the every class uh, we are capturing minimum 15 to 25 samples minimum uh, we are capturing that information that is the only the, here the same methodology we can follow uh, wherever we follow the similar methodology we are following uh, but that way uh, we are successfully we are capturing all information and also ground data uh, usually we start very uh, early morning per day we can cover uh, 400 to 500 kilometers we start early and we close by six o'clock on the evening and uh, uh, of course even uh, last uh, two weeks we are in the field uh, actually our team ismail and other people other team members they are traveling uh, total five states uh, in India uh, and we are capturing a lot of ground information. Now we are in preparation of uh, crop cutting experiments. Uh, you know, once we get the, you know, we, we have preliminary map. Once we come back to the field with the field information, we are improving our classification. That will be the standardized uh, crop extent map. Even crop extent also uh, that each crop extent, we are categorizing into uh, four to five groups based on uh, vegetation growth and uh, different uh, uh, you know, temporal profiles. Uh, based on that profile and based on that categories, we are doing crop cutting experiments. Actually, we, are do, uh, we have done optimization as well. Uh, one of my uh, yeah, colleague has done that one, uh, but uh, there are some limitations are there. Right now, we are not using that optimization method, but we are using same methodology, what I explained to you. Okay. okay. Okay, great. Um, just following on that, um, do you collect data for each season differently, or, or do you, uh, if you sell, if you collect one season data, and that can be also used in different seasons? You know, for example, if we have some specific locations where we are conducting studies, where we have projects, for example, mm -hmm. where we have projects and uh, compulsory, we will do for two seasons. For mm -hmm. example, we have done for uh, uh, you know Tanzania all African countries, uh, we are going only peak of the season or particular season, but at mm -hmm. that time we are taking, uh, you know, local expert, local expert, and also sometimes we are interviewing farmers and we are extracting a lot of information from them. And we have prior to a uh, field visit, we have a lot of information where double crop is there, where single crop is there. This is all signatures we are keeping in our laptop. By that time, we are comparing and we are interviewing farmers based on that information. Uh, yes, and, and if farmers are intercropping, uh, which is quite common uh, in African countries, uh, do yes. you think yeah, there will be some differences or difficulties of collecting data? Yes, uh, yeah, intercropping, even India also, especially dry land, mm. uh, intercropping is very common. So uh, we are, you know, we are taking samples also like that, you know, intercropping pattern and that is one group. Another one is monocrop. That is also one group. Of course, there are, uh, so for example, rice mixed with uh, pigeon pea and sometimes pigeon pea mixed with groundnut like that way. Mm -hmm. So we are capturing separate separately. Separately. Okay, great. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And another point I miss actually, yes. uh, you know, while capturing information, we are taking two sets of ground data. One is uh, uh, for a uh, Training data, another one is for validation purpose. Mm -hmm. Training mm -hmm. data, especially, which is very essential, we will get a lot of information for training data, especially, uh, you know, different uh, uh, cropping pattern. And, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, for example, first season and second season also, both seasons will, as much as we try to get all this detailed information for training data. And validation data, just we are capturing uh, while driving on the road. We are capturing from uh, uh, from the car only mm -hmm. because that's the reason you know uh, our ground data you know uh, training data is limited but uh, validation data is little bit more of mm -hmm. course we may not use for all validation data for validation purpose but to limited some data uh, wherever homogeneous uh, wherever good data that data will be used Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I think then let's move on to the the, um, the yield prediction and other more machine learning techniques. Yeah, I, I see some of the questions still on the data collection part. Um, if you can um, yeah, try to access Murari's recent publication, I think some of the questions you're asking 
uh, you, you'll be able to find answers. And, and yeah, again, there are so many different applications, different studies, and yeah, there might be a bit differences depending on the uh, research question, uh, how Morali set up the experiment and assess the accuracy. Uh, so yeah, please follow through, yeah, follow up with either Morali or, or some of these publications for more detailed answer. Um, okay, so and Morali, there are some questions about your yield prediction. Um, I think that's one of the new areas that you are exploring, and I think there are some questions around that too. So uh, yeah, you, you, yeah, so here, yeah, I, I uh, I noticed you are using crop model um, to estimate yield uh, based on the uh, the comparison between a uh, leaf area index from remote sensing and leaf area index from crop model. So you are not directly using remote sensing data to estimate yield. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah. We are not using directly, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, that is the one of the proxy for our analysis, our yield estimation through crop model. Uh, right now, we have done with the uh, leaf area index, uh, but uh, this time we are using soil moisture as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, your performance here uh, looked really good. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, myself, I'm also a crop modeler, and yeah, the R square uh, more than 0 0.7. Yeah, I consider this is this seems really. Um, super excellent, uh, it looks very really good. Um, so yeah, people are asking, uh, so what might be the challenging or, or uh, difficulties uh, or kind of uh, where you might see the opportunities to improve this yield prediction kind of um, algorithm or approaches? Actually, you know, uh, we are closely working with MNCFC as well, this one. Mm -hmm. Actually, basically, I'm not a crop modeler, but uh, I'm closely working with them. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Venkat Radha and Dr. Andrew Smith and Dakshina Murthy, these three people are working on uh, crop modeling. Um, yeah, if you have more doubts, so maybe we can discuss uh, separately about this one uh, along with uh, our crop modeling team. Right. Um, no, I mean, I, th I think this is, yeah, again, um, this looks really superior to any anything else I have seen. So I, I think there are a lot of excitement in the in the audience. And yeah, I think maybe this this itself, just yield prediction itself, maybe we can organize a separate webinar to uh, go into a little bit more detail and see. Also, maybe we can compare different approaches there. Um, so yeah, this is really excellent. Um, and, and so similarly, uh, so there is a question around uh, your data on crop management practices, again, um, yeah, a little bit different from crop type mapping for crop yield. Uh, there are a lot of different, like fertilizer and irrigation, different types of management practices uh, influence the level of yield productivity, uh, crop productivity. So yeah, if you, how, how you collect those data and how you incorporate those information? This is actually a very good question, uh, uh, Jawa. Uh, mainly, you know, crop management practices and uh, uh, you know, fertilizer information, uh, watering, and all this information we are capturing uh, when we collect a CCAs, crop cutting experiments. Mm. Because, you know, crop cutting experiment, because, you know, for ground data collection, for mapping during that time, we are not able to interact with the farmer every time. But, uh, you know, while doing crop cutting experiments, by that time, we are interacting with the farmer. Uh, with the farmer, uh, you know, uh, comes, uh, you, farmer allows only we will enter to the field and we will do the crop cutting experiments. By that time, actually, when we uh, during the crop cutting time, we are interacting with farmer and we are getting lot of information, all management practices and uh, other fertilizer, pesticide information. Also, we are gathering during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if, for example, this season, Karif season, right now uh, we are in preparation. Already Odisha, some of the parts, you know, some parts of Odisha, we have already started crop cutting experiments. Uh, more information I'll share very soon in a couple of weeks. Okay. Okay, okay great. And uh, um, another, another thing, actually, we are also, uh, you know, very closely working with the uh, nodal officers. Uh, for, uh, you know, for example, Odisha, uh, Dr. Rajesh Das is the nodal uh, focal point. Actually, who are supporting uh, are supporting us very, you know, uh, they are doing they are giving a lot of information of uh, what they gathered from the farmers and different uh, departments. 
mm-hmm. including climate data. Yeah, exactly. Um, so maybe just adding on to that, uh, have you tried to compare your estimation with official statistics data? Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I see you are working with uh, the crop yield, uh, crop no. insurance, yeah, in agency also statistics. Actually, yes, uh, actually here we are not doing anything, mm. but the crop areas, especially crop stress maps, we are uh, providing fortnightly. But more or less, it is uh, they are very happy with our uh, whatever we are delivering, whatever we are generating the products. They are very happy at district level. Mm. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's good. Um, so, yeah, then uh, there are some questions about how about other crops? Uh, so like, uh, I see a list of tomato, potato, chili, uh, and other types of crops than uh, what you presented. Uh, do, do you see there are some different uh, difficult crops to map uh, or difficult crops to also predict the yeah, yield are, uh, compared to others? Yes. There are some crops, it's very difficult, especially sorghum and maize. Some of the irrigated conditions, they grow mm. sorghum and maize especially in Maharashtra and uh, some parts of Karnataka. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of mix. And mm-hmm. another one, potato also, it is, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it is difficult to capture, uh, especially in Rajasthan. Um, yeah. Some parts it is very difficult. But UP, we captured really very good. Uh, and other crops, actually, we are very confident on uh, rice, soya bean, um, maize also sometimes intercropping, that is, which is very difficulty. And groundnut, we got very good. And pulses also some mix with some other crops. Sugarcane, it is exactly, yeah, we got a very accurate map. And millet also, we got exactly. And most of the crops, uh, you know, majority crops, uh, uh, we are, uh, yeah, satisfactory results. But some crops, it is, you know, there is a lot of mix. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, yeah, I can imagine. Um, okay, good. So that's, we are, we are almost, um, <laughs> uh, reaching to the end of the webinar session. So yeah, I, I see there are some new questions came up. Um, so we, we haven't had a chance to go through all the questions you answer, uh, asked. Um, but yeah, we will have, I will follow up with Murari after this webinar. And, and yeah, if we missed your question, we will try to provide answer in written format and uh, upload together with the video recording and presentation file to the Big Data Platform website. So please check that website. And yeah, if I can, I. I I, I might be able to send you the follow-up message uh, with all the links uh, to the video recording presentation and Q&A um, to your email that your email address you enter through the registration process. So I, I will coordinate with Big Data Platform team to follow up with you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, Murali, do you have any like final remark that you want to share with others? Yeah, I don't have any, but uh, thank you so much for giving me <laughs> okay. the uh, opportunity, Java and team. Yeah, thank you all for uh, yeah, for your uh, patience, uh, patience and questions. Yeah, absolutely, and no, thank you. I mean, it is our really pleasure, <laughs> and uh, yeah, th- thank you for jo- uh, giving this presentation and uh, for your time uh, in the middle of a really busy crop experiment season uh, to give us this presentation. So yeah, thank you, Murali, uh, and thanks everyone for joining today. And yeah, we will. I, I will follow up with you on, on this um, this recording and slide and uh, Q and A or triggers as I promised next week. Okay, thank you. Uh, Have a good rest of the day or or evening. And yeah, I'll see you next time for another webinar. Uh, Okay. Okay. Okay, bye.